Well, what is up, everyone? Welcome back to our lawn. Welcome back to the same great basement, different great hoodie. And more importantly, welcome back to the beginner lawn care series here on my channel that I'm going through this year to discuss everything foundationally that a new homeowner is going to need equipment, cultural practices, fertilization, killing weeds, watering, all of those types of foundational things. We're going to talk about them, give you all the information, practices that you need to have in order to have a nice yard at your new home. If you haven't already seen it, click the link up over there. That will take you to the playlist that has all of these videos in it. And with that, this video, we are talking about the foundational of foundational things, and that is mowing. And there's a reason when I talked about the equipment that you need, I only included a mower and a sprinkler because those two things are foundational and nothing else we do. And even watering when it comes to mowing, nothing else we do can overcome bad mowing habits. And in this video, we're gonna try to do a little bit more than just tell you about the one third rule and to go out there and mow as often as you can and keep sharp blades. In this video, we're going to talk about a little bit more, get into talking nerdy and get a little bit more into what's going on with the plant and how to understand what is happening in varying circumstances so that you can hopefully apply that yourself and really customize good mowing habits to the specific set of circumstances that you're operating within. And on top of that, at the end, I'm gonna sprinkle in a couple of things that I think I've found make mowing a little bit more fun and thus make it something you're willing to do a little bit more often. And without any further ado, let's make the biology of mowing exciting if we can, shall we? And so, like I said, two parts talking about what is actually happening when we're mowing and making mowing fun. This first part, we're gonna talk about how mowing is actually interacting with the plant that we're trying to cultivate to have a nice yard. So first of all, why do we mow? Well, we have a house with property and we'd like to use some of that space for play and leisure. And out there we have plants that are going to grow much taller than what would effectively lend itself to said play and leisure. And fortunately for all of us over time, livestock grazing has selected some of these plants that can be consistently defoliated, have their leaves removed. And then we've taken those and refined them into the turf grasses that we have today. And those grasses are in a class of their own in terms of plants that will thrive despite having all of their leaves cut off on a consistent basis, right? If we go out there every time our tree puts leaves out, we cut them all off, very quickly we're gonna have a dead tree. And also with these turf grasses, they're not designed to be very tall. If we let them get outside the top of their preferred height window, they start to get puffy, they get limp, and they just in general do not create a quality of turf that allows us to happily and easily use the space that we have designated on our lot for play. And with that being said then, what is actually happening to the plant when we mow? Well, in short, nothing good. To which you might be thinking, well, you just went through all that time and talked about how our grass plants can be defoliated consistently and how it actually helps. Correct. However, that doesn't mean the plant loves it. So what bad things are happening every time we go out there and cut our grass? Well, we are temporarily stopping root growth. We are temporarily reducing carbohydrate production and reducing carbohydrate stores. And we're creating ports of entry for disease, insects, all sorts of other vermin that are going to cause general problems with our plant. And then finally, we're temporarily reducing the roots ability to uptake water. And so then knowing we have a plant that is able to be consistently cut and that will thrive. However, when we do it, we are damaging the plant. How do we dial in exactly how and when we mow the lawn? And it really is just going to come down to mowing frequency. Mowing frequency is the key to all of this. How often are we mowing? And really up until I've made this video, I've always said mow as often as you can. I'll make it maybe daily. And while there are certain benefits from a turf quality perspective that mowing daily might bring, it's not the happy balance that we want to establish in terms of reducing the overall effort, cost, and stress we're putting on the plant. And I am going to take a moment here because we're talking fairly technical things. To be clear, I'm just a homeowner that spent some time learning about lawn care and has recently read a turf grass management textbook, and that is where my qualifications stop. So please understand I'm constantly learning. Some of this might be somewhat misinterpreted, maybe not exactly applied correctly. However, I do believe it's fairly accurate and is useful information for all of us. And so dialing in our mowing frequency is going to be directly linked to the mowing height that we pick. And the general beginner suggestion is to mow taller. However, that's a little bit oversimplified. So here I referenced uh, the textbook that I've been reading. I got a link in the description if you wanna go check it out, buy it for yourself. It's about $50. I would highly recommend it if you want to get really into the biology, chemistry, and cultural practices of managing turf grass at a high level. However, from that, 
is this graphic here, which I'll flash up on the screen. And that is showing based on your grass type, the height window that that grass is going to thrive in. And while it's not exactly specific, let's consider low a half inch and high four inches. Those are arbitrary, but that's roughly a general window we can live within. And so you can see based on your grass type, you might want to mow it shorter and actually that's beneficial for the plant. And so now we know our height window for the grass type that we have. Now, how do we pick whether we wanna be on the higher end or the lower end? Well, what happens at the higher end? And so if we're mowing taller, that will allow us to mow a little bit less frequently due to a general concept of the one third rule, which still does seem to be foundationally the, the basic thing we wanna do, which is to say that we don't ever want to cut off more than a third of the grass blade. So taller plant, a third of taller plant is taller. And so more growth can occur between each mowing, thus allowing us a little bit more time. Also, we're allowing the plant when it's mowed at the higher end of its mowing window to be a little bit more tolerant to stresses, especially in cool season grass. A taller plant mowed a little bit less frequently can send more of its energy to root development and it can just in general deal with stress a little bit better. However, that's not to say that mowing lower doesn't come with some of its own benefits. And so what's happening and how do we decide if we want to mow a little bit lower? And mowing lower is actually physiologically changing the grass plant itself. There's a term referenced as size density compensations, but basically you mow it shorter, the, the plant figures out that it needs to have more tillers, more shoots, more leaves, because they're not as tall. So in order to have the same photosynthetic ability, that's not probably a word, but it needs more leaves. So it will start to get much thicker if you're mowing it shorter. And so the impact is more aerial shoot growth, increased shoot density and smaller shoot size. However, in that same scenario, we are decreasing root and rhizome growth, and we're decreasing synthesis and storage of carbohydrates. So what is essentially happening is we're creating a denser, higher quality turf, however, at the cost of creating a plant that is less able to withstand stress. And so based on that information, based on the window of height that your grass wants to operate within, you've picked the height of cut that you want to live at. So how often do you mow? Well, it's just the one third rule, right? If you pick a half inch that you want to mow at, you get up to what, three quarters of an inch, probably every two or three days. If your grass is able to go up to four inches and you pick there, you get up to, you know, five and a quarter, five and a half inches, maybe four or five, six days you can get. And again, we're talking about optimal. If it goes a little bit longer than that from time to time, that's fine. We really just want to avoid the consistent cycle of letting it grow up way tall and cutting it back down way short because that is really when we're damaging the plant and we're causing all sorts of problems for ourselves that the plant has to spend time recovering from instead of getting thicker, stronger, healthier, better. And there we go, that's what's happening. That's how we decide how often we need to mow. One thing I will add is we need to know that in times of drought and in times of high heat, the plant is under more stress and mowing is causing another layer of stress. So as best you can, and especially with our cool season turfs that aren't growing overly vigorously during the summer, you can really lay off the mowing frequency to just try to help protect the plant, raise the height up a little bit during the summer to help it deal with stress a little bit better and you're gonna be just fine. So this is a foundational thing with lawn care that we have to do, but it can be a chore. It's effort. We got to go outside. We got to walk around. So how do we make it fun? So we do it more often. Well, my first thought is a perspective change. For me, the reason I have a commercial walk behind mower as opposed to a lawn tractor ride on zero turn, something like that is I love the walk. I love the ability to get outside, spend 45 minutes to an hour outside in the yard, getting a little bit of exercise. And it's the perfect excuse to do it, right? It's a chore that we have to do. Or maybe you're not like that, but you do want to get outside and you just want to crack a beer over open, crack open your favorite Gatorade, whatever beverage you love to sip on, throw it in the cup holder you're riding lawnmower and go out there and just cruise around for a bit. Whatever it is, let's make this a fun thing that we can get outside and just enjoy our outdoor property. What is ours, what we make beautiful, get out there, enjoy it. Now I know stripes aren't for everyone, but I think really getting passionate and creative with making stripes in your yard is one way to really make it fun, right? That's the picture we have of the golf course fairy all striped up and perfect perfect diamonds or half and half or whatever creative things you can come up with. Either buy a striping kit if your mower doesn't do a great job of it or DIY one. There are countless videos out there on how to do that for cheap and go out there, learn to love your stripes, get it all looking mint as photogenic as possible. Get out there, lay some stripes down. Make it a family affair. 
Get your kids involved if they're old enough. Get out there, see who can mow straighter lines with your kids. Have contests, who can come up with the coolest stripe pattern. You know, gets them outside. That's a beneficial thing. Plus then you're potentially reducing the work that you have to do if every so often your kids are out there mowing and having a good time doing it. And the other thing, and, and the last thing and probably most important, and this is what I discussed in the equipment video, is you need to have the right mower for your property. If you have an acre and a 21 inch Honda, you're not gonna have a great time because it's gonna be a two and a half hour, two hour affair. And that's just too long. So really make sure you have the right mower for your property so that it takes a reasonable amount of time and isn't this horrible chore. And so there we go. Hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully maybe you learned some things that you can implement, you know, some knowledge of what's actually happening in the plant. I know when I when I read it, it was helpful for me to figure out and how to dial in uh, mowing for myself. So hopefully that's helpful for you. If it was, please like the video, leave a comment if you have some fun, clever ways that you make mowing fun, or just simply share what it is that you like about mowing. Maybe if you want to share your height of cut that you picked and how you manage that, that'd be great as well. If you want to follow along to this series and everything that we're doing to provide a foundation for new homeowners, lawn care beginners, please subscribe to the channel, follow along to everything we're doing here. And again, and as always, I sincerely do thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.